There are six national income concepts. It can be addressed from some six different angles. First one was GDP. Three. Then GNP. GNP is what? National product. How this is estimated? We have to subtract something from GDP. A GNP is the is what? Net national product in that case we subtract something. GNP is what? GDP, gross domestic product. Uh, gross domestic product is the total market value of all final goods and services currently produced within the domestic within the domestic territory. But in case of GNP, we also consider another things. Net factor income. That means the people of our country who work abroad earn some income, that is also our income. And the foreigners who work here, we pay them for their services that we deduct. Right? That we deduct. Then we have the sidon. Then we have another concept, net national product. Net national product has two components. One is net NNP at factor price, NNP at market price. Then we have personal income as an disposable income. Right? Now, this <coughs> in measurement of this, let us believe one particular concept. Suppose in an economy, a man sell something to somebody. The man who pays for buying a particular commodity is his expenditure, is it not? The man who pays for buying a particular commodity is his expenditure. His expenditure is in fact is an income from, for the person who sells that commodity, right? So if we can measure the expenditure of a person, we can simultaneously estimate the income of the other person also. And suppose we do not know the amount of expenditure by, suppose a man A, and income of the man B because of that particular transaction, but we know the quant value of goods and services that is transacted, then also it shows the income of person A and expenditure of person B, right? So in an economy, National income is measured from three different angles. First, it is the expenditure of all the individuals, including the government in a country. Because expenditure in one part becomes an income in another part. Money is not destroyed. So, if we can measure the expenditure in one hand, we can measure the other way also, we can measure the income of the other. If we do not measure the income, if we do not measure the expenditure, if we can measure the value of goods and transacted in an economy during a particular year, then also we can find out how much expenditure is made, how much income is made by the, in a country. That is the national income. So, national income is measured from three different angles. Production generates income, which is again spent on goods and services produced when a particular commodity is produced, it is sold, it generates some income. And this income is spent on goods and services. Therefore, income of, national income of a country can be measured from three different angles. Output or production method, income method, and finally the expenditure method. Output or production method, income method, and the expenditure method. So if we can measure the production of all goods and services in a country and measure their value, that is our national income. And if we can measure the income of all individuals in a country, including the income of the government, that is also a measure of the national income. And if we can measure the expenditures incurred by all the individuals in a country, including the public expenditure by the government. Private expenditure and public expenditure, these are the two types of expenditures. If we can measure that, that is also a, an estimation of national income. 
Now, how these three are, can be estimated or addressed? Let us first <coughs> find out one by one these three measures of national income. First is the output method. Output or production method. This is also called value added method. The last time I told you when a cotton is produced, then finally it is used as a raw material for production of yarn. Value is added, added to the cotton. Yarn is again processed for fabric. Again value addition is there. Fabric is used for manufacturing of ready-made garments. Again value addition. So this production ultimately leads to addition of value to different commodities. So this method is also called value added method. And this is an estimation of national income from the output side, from the output side. So how we measure the national income? First is the economy is divided into different sectors. We know the first thing that we know is that the economy is divided into different sectors. We already know there are five different sectors in an economy. Primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary and quinary, right? Now, <coughs> we first <coughs> divide the economy into different sectors. Once we divide this, the entire economy into different sectors, in the very next step, what we do? We estimate the GDP, gross domestic product. This is the value of all goods and services produced within the domestic territory of the country. And value of goods and services produced by these different sectors of the economy. From the agricultural sector, we can find out GDP. From the mining sector, we can estimate the GDP. From the service sector also, we can estimate the GDP. Similarly, for the manufacturing sector. Then, we can estimate GDP by adding up the market value of net production of all these sectors during a given financial year. And in this estimation, as I told you before repeatedly, that all intermediate goods are ignored. Only the final goods and services are considered for this estimation. Why the final goods and services are considered? Intermediate goods are ignored. What is the reason behind? Because if we consider the intermediate goods also, it may create a problem of double counting of the resources. And if we go for double counting, ultimately entire national income estimation will be inflated. So we avoid this. Then once the GDP is estimated, then we go for estimation of GNP. So GNP is estimated by aggregating the market value of net production of all the industries and sectors. Net production of all the industries and sectors. Plus net factor income from abroad. Plus net factor income from abroad. Already perhaps in the last class you know how the GNP is, can be estimated. Right? that you already know how the GNP can be estimated. And net factor income from abroad is nothing but the amount of income that goes away from our country is to be subtracted. Amount of income received by our individuals from abroad that is to be added. In whatever form it is, it should be added. So difference between amount of income spent to the foreigners and amount of income received from abroad by our Indian nationals, this is the net factor income. Then in the very next step, we estimate NNP at the market price. NNP at market price is estimated by deducting GNP from the, uh, uh, by deducting depreciation from the GNP. Depreciation is what? It is loss in the value of assets, capital assets, because of its use. 
because of wear and tear. So, when this depreciation is subtracted or deducted from the GNP, we get NNP at the market price. And once we find out NNP in the market, uh, at market price, then we estimate NNP at factor cost. NNP at factor cost. And NNP at factor cost is nothing but NNP at market price minus indirect taxes plus subsidies. Minus indirect tax plus subsidies. What are these two components, indirect tax and subsidies, that you already know? Subsidies are transfer payments, these are income received, but not. Okay, Philip Dim Blanks Dilla Paribane. Subsidy, subsidies are income received, but not earned. Old age pension, unemployment allowances. Income earned but not received. It will give. That is the example. Income earned but not received. Income tax, professional tax, undistributed profits. So, these are income earned but not received. Now, once we estimate NNP at factor cost, that is our national income. That is our national income. Then this output method can be used where there exists a census of production during a particular year. Census of production during a particular year. In a country, normally, the <coughs> there is a census of the production from different sectors of the economy. Then once we have this census, we know the volume of production from different sectors of the economy. And multiplying the volume of production by the market prices of these produced goods and services, we get, first initially we get the GDP. Then finally, step by step, if we add and deduct certain uh, components, finally we arrive at the national income. Clear? Then we have <coughs> the very next method, income method. This is simple. Ask everybody how much you want and add it. Is it not? But this is not as simple as that. Now, in this method, national income is estimated from the distribution side. Here, income from all individuals in a country, I aid it, including the income of the government. So, thus national income is calculated by adding the income components of all the factors of production. Our factors of production are four. There are four factors of production in an economy. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur organization. And whatever is produced, that is finally distributed over these four factors of production. So, the income of these four factors of production are nothing but <coughs> rent, wages, interest, and profit. If in an economy, these four components, all the land rents, all the wages, all the interest on the capital used in the economy and all the profits from the entrepreneurs as well as profit of income of the self-employed people. If all these, these components can be added, we get the national income. This is nothing but summation of all rent, wages, interest and profit and as well as the income of the self-employed people in an economy during a financial year. This is the income method of estimation of national income. The one major advantage of this system is that it indicates distribution of national income among different uh, income groups. Among different income groups. 
once we have the total national income estimated by this method, we know how much income the laborers earn, how much income the entrepreneurs they earn, and what is their differences. There are two major groups of income earners in an economy. One is the working class, the other one is capitalist class. And an economy will prosper if the difference between this income, of, income level of these two groups, workers as well as the entrepreneurs, is lessened. There is not much a, a difference or there is no vast difference between the income of the workers and the income of the entrepreneurs. That means income level should be equal for all. Then this particular method will tell us the differences in the income level of these two groups of people. And for that matter, the, if the government feels that there should be certain uh, policies to safeguard the interest of the workers, or sometimes to safeguard the interest of the entrepreneurs, then the, these policies can be taken by the government. So, this particular method shows the income levels of landlords, capitalists, as well as the workers. And accordingly, the government designs different policies to safeguard the interest of these, these conflicting groups of people. Then third and the final method is the expenditure method. In this method, national income is estimated by adding up all the expenditures made on goods and services during a financial year. All the expenditures made on the goods and services <coughs> during a financial year. First we have estimated national income from the angle of production. Second, from the income side, income of the individuals. And in this method, we'll also provide the estimation of national income from the angle of expenditures. Now, in, the, in this particular method, usually, expenditures of households as well as the government and the private individuals, their expenditures are considered. And finally, all these are aided to find, arrive at the national income. Now, then first, what is done? Expenditure on consumer goods and services by all individuals and households are aided. Expenditures by all individuals and households on the consumer goods. These are estimated and finally aided. This let us denote as C. C denotes the expenditure made by the households and the individuals in a country during a financial year on all consumer goods. Why the consumer goods are considered here, not on the capital goods? Shall we need to consider this capital goods, expenditure on capital goods also? Hmm? Here in this method, only consumer goods and services, expenditure on consumer goods and services are considered. But Goods are of two types. In the very beginning class, you got it. There is a consumption goods and production goods. What is a consumption goods? Goods which are directly consumed by the consumers or individuals. What is a production good? Goods which are used for further production of goods and services. Now in a country, there are lot many production goods also. These goods are used for production of other consumer goods. Why expenditure on the production goods are not considered here? Or if not considered here, 
whether is it necessary to consider the production goods? Hmm? Whether do you feel that it should also be considered? Lagi hmm? lagi. Expenditure made by private business enterprises on capital goods. Lagi this will be required, but these are not consumed by the common consumers. Capital goods are not consumed by the common consumers. These are com consumed by the capitalist groups or the entrepreneurs. These are not common consumers. Common consumers consume only the consumer goods. And expenditure on the consumer goods is considered that we denote it separately as C. Now there is a producing uh, producers or organizers or entrepreneurs who purchase the consumer uh, production goods and expenditures made by the private businessmen or entrepreneurs on the capital goods or production capital goods are also the production goods then these are aided and this we call it as I so ultimately C plus I denote the expenditure made on capital goods as well as the consumption goods. Is it not? All consumer goods, expenditure on consumer goods are denoted by C. All expenditures on uh, production goods or capital goods are denoted by I. And apart from this, the government makes certain expenditures. Public expenditure we studied. And in the public expenditure, government spends for the welfare of the people. And when government spends certain money for the welfare of the people, it may not create any asset also. It may provide only the kind of service required for the, by the people. And this expenditure made by the government for the benefit of the people, that we denote as G. That we denote as G. So ultimately, we have incorporated three major expenditures in an economy during a financial year. First, C, expenditures made by the individuals and households on the consumer goods. All consume, final consumer goods which are produced in an economy, they are consumed at somewhere by some people. So expenditures made on these commodities are aided and we find C. Then a country produces capital goods or production goods. These are consumed by the entrepreneurs or the private businessmen somewhere in some market. And we estimate the value of all the capital goods produced and consumed in an economy during a financial year that we denoted I as I. Apart from this, the government earns income in the form of public revenue. And then this revenue is spent for the welfare of the people. There is a government expenditure in a country during a year. These expenditures ultimately create benefit or the service to the people. This we call it as Z, the government expenditure. Apart from that, any other expenditure is there in the country? Think in the aggregate, not as an individual, because it is a macroeconomic concept. And uh, if any, any, any component is left out, then also that also we can add up to this national income expenditure method concept. Till now, N i national income is equal to C plus i plus z, is it not? Any other component? Still there are two com major components and from these two components net expenditure we are still to incorporate. Net value of from these two components. whether a country imports or not, 
when a country imports there is an expenditure. This expenditure is made by the government. This is not for your social welfare, G. This is an expenditure made by the government to increase the consumer goods sometime, sometime capital goods also. Because export, import may be capital goods, sometime it may be consumer goods. When a country, our country imports onion, it is a consumer goods. When a, our country imports machineries from abroad, this is a capital good. And for that, there is government expenditure. Similarly, when we export tea, we export consumer goods. We, when we export technical know-how or machineries to other countries, we export capital goods. Net value of these two income and expenditures, we have to consider. Export minus import. This we have to consider. So another component of this national income expenditure method is expenditure made by foreigners on goods and services of the national economy. Over and above this economy spends on the output of the foreign goods. That is export minus import. That is denoted by X minus M. Net value of import and export. Sometimes this may be positive, sometimes this may be negative. When it is positive? When we mind it, it should be expenditure, not income. It should be expenditure, don't confuse. We are not considering the income of our country. When we consider income, this is net factor income from abroad. That is another thing. But here we are considering the expenditures. When we import more than our exports, we pay more. Our expenditure is more. And that is to be added. When we export more, then what we import, we have increased revenue. That is to be subtracted. Is it not? So ultimately what we get, national income is C plus I plus G minus export minus import. This value, either it may be positive or negative depending upon the value of this value of export and import. So these are the three different methods. One is income method, the other one is the production method or value added method and the third one is the expedition method. And for this we have different type of census, different type of say <coughs> data collection measures by the NSS national sample survey, they collect the data from different sectors of the economy. National sample survey collects data from every field, ultimately they provide information to the government. And finally, every quarter, qu quarterly, different sectors of the economy, they are to submit the amount of goods and services produced, they show their balance sheets, in the balance sheets everything made, is made clear. Then finally there is a government department, they sum up all, all this and quarterly, <coughs> periodically, ultimately, periodically the government decides how much GDP is increasing or coming down in percentage form government makes it known to the public also. The GDP growth is increasing. Recently there was a news. Growth rate has come down to 5.3 percent in this last quarter, July, September quarter. The previous, in the previous quarter it was 5.7 percent. It has come down. So this is on the basis of the estimations made by different wings of the government on, the, on different parameters of, the, of our economy. Then, although it looks very simple that 
the measurement of national income, but it is not as simple as it looks like. There are certain difficulties and there are, these are some of the difficulties that are faced in the estimation of national income. First is the prevalence of non-monetized transactions in agriculture. Non-monetized transaction means? Non-monetized transactions in agriculture. There is a farmer, he produces lot of tomato and one of his relative has come to his farm and he has given 5 kg of tomato free. That means he has got, he has received no income for that 5 kg of tomato. And similarly, in each and every field, normally this happens. And particularly, the farmers, they themselves consume their own home produce. That is not valued in terms of money. Rice that is produced by a farmer, he consumes by himself or by his entire family and that is not measured in terms of money. Only the amount of rice or the vegetables or other type of products that are sold in the market, that comes under the estimation. <coughs> this is one. Second is the illiteracy. Due to illiteracy, farmers, they do not maintain proper records. They cannot tell accurately the amount of land that he has sometime and amount of products that he produces in most cases, he gives a rough estimate. And because of that, a part of the national income is not measured, cannot be measured because of lack of available records. Then occupational specialization is incomplete. Although there are different sectors in the economy, People are engaged in different sectors. They are absorbed. Their occupations are in different sectors. But this difference is still not complete. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to accurately measure the income or the products from different sectors of the economy. Because economy is so vast and it is so diversified that all the different activities cannot be divided into five major sectors that are identified. Sometimes they are, they are overlapping and sometimes certain areas are not considered also. They, they, certain areas do not come under the purview of these divisions. They <coughs> go unnoticed or sometimes they are ignored because of difficulty or because of some other reasons. So, because of this problem, a part of the national income is not measured. So, what we measure is only an estimation. Then, lack of adequate statistical data. Complete statistical data as accurately as possible is not available. Sometimes, this is collected from the <clears throat> memory recall and recall from memories <clears throat> always may not be accurate and in absence of proper statistical data, this estimation sometimes cannot be 100 percent foolproof. Then estimation of value of inventories, that is raw materials is very difficult. Valuation of all goods and services in the economy is a big problem, it is a tough job. Even in a single individual's home, what is the value of all assets if someone tries to measure, it becomes a very difficult provision. It is very difficult, there is a long list even in a single individual's house. Right from one safety pin to one motor car, you just think of how much asset an individual may have. An estimation of all this is a very difficult. So, ultimately it becomes a rough estimate. If it is a problem in a single individual's house, then think of an industry or ultimately in the aggregate for a country. It becomes very difficult to measure the value of all assets in an economy. So, ultimately 
whatever the estimation is done that is a <coughs> that is purely on the basis of certain logical judgments and the estimation of the value. Then estimation of depreciation on capital goods, it is also another, another problem. Because for similar kind of goods, different industries may charge different depreciation rates. In absence of proper norms, sometimes depreciation charges may be different. Ultimate depreciation is what? Loss in the value of assets because of its use. Two similar companies are there, they have got similar type of machines, but the depreciation, one company's depreciation rate is something different from the other. Ultimately, it will affect the national income estimation. There should be a proper clear cut guideline, even if it is there. Sometimes this may be flouted by <coughs> different uh, organizations, may not be followed equally by all. And sometimes the estimations may not be as accurate as it should be. So these are some of the difficulties and sometimes certain commodities are double counted that cannot be avoided. And when there is double counted, there is <coughs> national income estimation is inflated. And if it is not estimated, then sometimes it is deflated. National income estimation is low if certain commodities are not considered uh, within the purview of the national income estimation. Why this is useful? But although there are difficulties in estimation of national incomes, this is useful. So that is why government estimates national income from different sectors and finally keep track of their developments. This is useful because it is a measurement of the economic welfare. A country's prosperity is known from its national income. If net national income is increasing, ultimately the country is in the de development part. Secondly, determination of standard of living of the community. To what extent the standard of living of the people of a country is improving or going down? The national income shows the way. Because if the personal income is increasing, then this total personal income, if it is divided by the number of people in the country, we get what? Per capita income. And per capita income over the years, if it is increasing, that means the country is in the development part. Then assessment of economic development and for comparison purpose. This is also, national income estimations are required because sometimes we need to compare the different sectors in an economy. Whether the primary sector is developing or the secondary sector is improving. Or if both are developing, what is the rate of growth of primary sector and the rate of growth of the secondary sector. Suppose sometimes the situation may be that primary sector is developing at 2% growth rate but secondary sector or manufacturing sector moves ahead by 10%. Since primary sector is the basic, it supplies the basic raw materials as well as for secondary sector and also it provides the food stuff. This is the prime consideration that is to be given suppose. So the government can take up the policy because its growth rate is 2%, it should be brought to 6%. There must be fixing of objectives like this. In the <coughs> Immediately after independence, when the five-year plans were taken up, the, in the, the objectives of the first five-year plan were mostly on the development of the agricultural sector. Once the agricultural sector attains a certain, develop, a certain stage, developed stage, then the attention was shifted to the manufacturing sector. Industrial sector was given more importance. So accordingly, the government fix up the priorities. Because these priorities can be fixed up only when we come to know the growth in different sectors of the economy. So that is why these estimations are very much required. National income estimates are very much required. 